All right, guys, we have two brand new gimbals shipped over from uh, KMTV.com. Uh, this is an upgraded 7500 version. This is the new 7800. Technically, they're almost exactly the same. They're running the same boards, sensors, software, profile. Everything is pretty much the same. Now, on the 7800, they made some modifications with the handles as well as um, a quick release base plate. Uh, but that's pretty much the only difference. Um, this guy right here, the upgraded 7500 model. Now, if you got the 7500 earlier, then uh, it may be slightly different. But again, technically, it's the same controller, IMUs, profiles, all that stuff. What they've changed on the 7500 here, if I can get this out, is uh, the battery plate up here. Uh, the connection up here for your battery. So some of the wiring has kind of changed a little bit. The wires um, as well are now kind of covered up and uh, a little bit more durable, it looks like. Um, but again, pretty much the same thing. Just a lot. Uh, some of the wiring has been changed. <clears throat> now, this is still uh, one that you have to kind of slightly put together. Um, if you watch my other 7500 unboxing, uh, you'll you'll see what it takes to kind of assemble it now most of it is is put together but not the top handle here um, and then there are a few other pieces that are just kind of left loose because you have to tighten everything up uh, as you balance your camera so check out that video on the 7500 if you're interested in this model it's slightly cheaper now you notice that this case here is a lot taller a lot thicker uh, the 7800 is coming completely built there's nothing you need to do to assemble it uh, whatsoever. Let me put this away and then um, I'll pull this one out. All right, so um, getting back to the 7800, there it is all packed up nice and neat, locked in a lot of foam. And let's see if we can get this guy out. So this is the first time I'm unpacking this thing. I haven't powered it on yet, but supposedly all this comes assembled, configured, balanced, everything. So this, they're getting to a point where it's getting easier as you, as you get these gimbals. This guy's packed up in there real good. All right, there you go. Let's put it on my DIY gimbal stand here. All right. I believe this motor is on the other side. This way, and that goes that way. Okay. So there you go. There's actually no assembly required. The battery is going to mount up here onto the. Uh, there's a battery mount up at the top here, and then. Over here, they include like a little monitor mount. So um, it's an area for you to put like a little ball head and then uh, put your monitor up there. And then your battery will plug right into this Dean's. I don't know if you guys can see that. Um, there's a little Dean's connector up here. Ships with a battery, ships with a charger. Now these chargers, they work, not the best chargers. You're probably gonna end up getting a better charger. Uh, I'll link to that one uh, that I use. I use a Tenergy. And then batteries as well. These are standard um, Dean's connectors, and you'll find them uh, almost at every store. So these are 11.1 uh, volt, and uh, I use some Venom ones, which have been great, and I'll, I'll link to those as well. Um, but that's probably something that you want to get as you get one of these gimbals here. All right, um, let me get the battery on here. Let me get one of my cameras, and then we'll go through the process of balancing it um, you shouldn't need anything in this box there's a lot of spare parts lots of spare parts but you won't need any of this stuff when you're getting set up it's really pretty much just out of the box ready to go so uh, let me get the battery attached here let me get a camera and I'll be right back and we'll start balancing all right, guys, so we have the QR plate attached to a 5D Mark III, my Sigma 20 millimeter favorite lens to use uh, on this camera. 
when I'm working with stabilizer. Um, now, one of the things about the QR plate is it has lines, so it has some markings. Unfortunately, there are no numbers. So uh, if you want to get your QR plate back on your camera, you're going to have to kind of guess or you're going to have to leave your own marks here depending on your camera and your lens setup. There's no recipe to say, put it back on number three. Um, so anyways, yeah, the QR plate is very, very thin. I don't know if you can see that. So the 7500 has the exact same frame. The 7800 now comes with this QR plate at the bottom, but uh, the frame is exactly the same size. Um, they just added like maybe an inch or so. So we're going to try and get this in here. Now, first thing I notice is that it's the camera is hitting at the top. And so what we want to do is we could do a couple of things. We can bring this down to fit the camera or we could bring the top up um, to fit the camera. Now, what you should do is bring the top up because you want to be able to have a lot of range on the bottom part of the camera because you're, you have to balance uh, this, this axis by raising the camera up and down. So you probably want this to be at the highest point um, possible, uh, this top plate right here, so that you have all the range at the bottom because that's important for balancing the camera the top part isn't so important to balance your camera. So what we're going to do is we're going to adjust this one and bring this up so we have more room for our camera. All right, so we have the top plate moved all the way up. Again, that's not so important to balancing your camera. It's more of the bottom plate, how high or how low your camera sits between these, uh, this motor and this bearing here. So. Um, the top can go all the way up. That's typically what I do. So let's uh, bring the camera in here and let's see where we're at as far as balance goes. So what I'm doing right now is um, <clears throat> you see, you notice that the camera is going to roll left and right. Uh, right now, I only want to focus on on this um, pitch on the, the pitch or the tilt. So I'm going to I'm just going to hold the roll level and I'm going to move the camera back and forth and let the pitch move freely and I just want to get the camera balanced so it's not falling over. Having this QR plate makes it real easy. So as you can see the camera is uh, pretty much balanced at that point. Um, underneath the uh, battery area of the Canon we have this little lever so I'm not sure if you can see that but this lever just flips in and that locks it in place. It's actually very smooth. So it'll be real easy to get your camera in and out. Okay, so I'm pitching forward a little bit. Let me loosen this up, slide back, lock it down. Okay, that's better, much better. Okay, so the next thing I'm gonna test is um, putting the camera on its back and just seeing if, it, if it's gonna fall uh, backwards or forwards. So what's happening here, here is if I, if I have it at this angle, see how I could show that to you guys, the camera should, uh, stay in this position, but you notice it's, oh yeah, it's actually doing pretty well. Okay. It's a little, no, it's actually doing pretty well there. So they, I think they pre-balanced this unit for a 5D and it's very close to my setup. Now I am falling over on the uh, camera left here. So what I need to do is I need to move the camera over to the right. Now in, in the past, um, you had to loosen up the screws on the back and move the whole entire rod over. Now with the 7800, they have these uh, um, s basically some slots that allow you to move the whole camera on the base here. Um, so that makes life way easier. So there's a two quarter um, screws down here, some flat heads. We'll just use a, we'll use a quarter to loosen that up. And what we're going to do is we're just going to shift the camera over till we get that balanced. 
So let's loosen that, figure out how we can get this to be balanced. Yeah, actually looks pretty good right there. Let me tighten up these screws underneath. Nice. Okay. So I'm pretty close here. So you know uh, the camera is not rolling left or rolling right. It's not falling forward or back. Um, I'm pretty close with this balance here. So actually the 7800 with this QR plate made a huge difference uh, from their other models because now you can adjust your pitch by sliding your camera forward and back on the QR. You can adjust your roll by just these two screws here going left and right. So, I mean, that just makes life a lot easier. You don't have to mess with all the other stuff. Very, very cool uh, uh, what they did here with the 7800. Now, um, the next thing we got to do is just adjust the yaw. So this is kind of tricky. You still have the four screws here at the top. And then uh, just like the other gimbal, what you want to do is you want to kind of tilt it and figure out which way it swings. And then you're going to either push the whole top post forward or back. So let's figure out. So you notice that right away, this uh, back part is swinging over. So what we have to do is we have to slide this top post uh, forward. So let me move this over here. So let me loosen up this top part. All right, so not totally snug up yet. Let's lean this over and uh, figure out where it wants to tilt or swing. Okay, so it's uh, the front, the front's a little bit heavy there. So let's uh, pull this post back a little bit. I'm gonna have to loosen this up again. All right, I think I got it. I think I uh, have the post moved far enough forward so that when I tilt the handles, it doesn't swing around. So adjusting the yaw is very important uh, for every gimbal out there. A lot of people will miss that step, but I will show you what your gimbal is supposed to do when you tilt your handles. So, if your camera is positioned this way, everything's turned off, all your motors are off, um, you should, your camera shouldn't fall forward or back, it shouldn't roll left or right. Um, I may not be perfect, perfect right now, but the yaw portion of it, uh, the top bar, you have to slide it either forward or back. And the way you um, can tell if you're getting close to being balanced is you grab the handle and you would tilt sideways. And this should, this should remain. The camera shouldn't swing this way or shouldn't swing this way. Um, it should pretty much hold the position as you tilt the handle. So we're, we're pretty good here. So if I tilt it the other way, you notice uh, swinging a little bit forward. Just a little bit forward. So that means I have too much weight on the front post and then I would pull that post backwards 
Um, but I'm not gonna worry about that right now because I think we're pretty close and hopefully it's going to work well enough. Uh, so let's just power this guy on. I haven't, again, I haven't played with any of the uh, profiles or anything. Um, I haven't tuned this gimbal up. They say it should come with some PID settings that should be close uh, for this uh, DSLR type of camera. So let's just power it on and see what happens. Boot it up very quickly. As you can see, the camera is uh, leveling itself out. Let's go ahead and um, take it off the stand. Actually, my handles are backwards. I'm gonna power this off. Let's turn this around this way. There you go. So. That's on already. Yep, joystick's working. That looks pretty good, so it's not a lot you have to do once you get your gimbal. There's no follow mode turned on here. Let's try profile two. Yep, so there's a there's a follow mode on profile two here. It's a really fast follow mode. Yeah, seems to be okay. Got your tilts. Let me try a profile three. It's no follow. Not sure what profile four is. I like profile two, but the follow is very fast. So I may want to change that. In any case, this gimbal is up and it's running and the camera is there. So I didn't really have to do a lot with this 7,800. I didn't have to attach any of the handles um, I didn't have to do any wiring. Balancing the camera was much easier with this QR plate now that you can go forward and back on the camera as well as side to side. Just a little bit of work on the yaw, but uh, it's only four screws and you slide the post forward and back. So not too difficult at all. Um, yeah, and then the handles here now have changed. So they, they look a lot better. They still have this yellow on here. I'm not a fan of the yellow, uh, but you can always change these foam grips out. Um, the top handle here comes off with one screw now. So if you're packing it up into a hard case, um, you know, typically you have to take this handle off. So it doesn't look too difficult to do that as well. And you can, you can shrink down some of that height. The battery plugs in here at the top, very clean. Yeah, I don't know. It's a, it's a nice system. If you're just trying to get going on, on a three axis gimbal stabilizer, these guys have been doing a great job um, putting stuff out there. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, as you can see, it didn't take me very long to balance this uh, 5D Mark III and Sigma 20 millimeter lens. Generally, this is what the system is going to be pre-balanced for. So if you have anything lighter, like an A7S or a GH4, you may have to go in and change some of the PID settings. Uh, but as far as going for a DSLR around this size and weight, um, you know, out of the box, pretty much ready to go. No wiring, no assembly. Um, I would go through and just double check a lot of these screws, make sure that everything is tightened up. Uh, but again, balancing forward, back, left and right, very, very simple to do. Uh, does not require any tools except for maybe a quarter, the bottom. And then the yaw, you have that uh, four screws with the Allen key, but that's it. Um, if you guys are looking to get into three axis gimbal stabilizers, pre-built, pre-balanced, pre-configured, I mean, you know, 
what else can you do? There's a lot of guys using the Came TV stuff. So, uh, you know, listen to their comments, listen to how they're using it. Um, I see a lot of guys on Instagram tagging them already. So everyone's using this product um, and they're just getting better. You know, their first one, you had to build it yourself, but now they're starting to add some other features in here that uh, make it easier to just get in, get up and running right out of the box without any tuning. Um, but anyways, that's a quick look at the 7800. Again, the 7500 has been changed. So anyone buying the new 7500 has uh, some slight tweaks there, but if, if you want to make balancing easier, this QR plate on the 7800 is killer. It uh, will help you a lot. Um, and then also get your camera out when you're not using the gimbal, just, you know, get it back out really quickly. So um, they did a good job keeping it still affordable for people, but adding some additional features and make it clean. If you guys have any other questions on this stuff, check it out at the blog, cheesycam.com. Hey guys, uh, real quick, just to uh, jump back in the video here. If you're looking for a hard case that's going to fit the uh, 7800 or 7500, um, this is the Nanook 945 and it's very, very close. Uh, let me show you what it looks like. Um, not very thick, um, but definitely has the dimensions to fit the uh, 7800 here. Um, and let me show you what it looks like when it's inside. We do have to take the top handle off and I'll show you why. There are four locks on here. Each lock has a little button or switch that you have to click so it won't accidentally open. Um, but let's open this case up. Now they come with or without padding. I chose the one with foam padding. Uh, this was a case uh, suggested to me by a uh, reader. Um, I guess it's a coast photo, a coast photo. Uh, maybe I'm not saying it right, but anyways. Um, so I decided to try it because he said it would work. Uh, but what you have to do in order to get it to fit, let's take the camera out of here. There's a quick release button or a safety button on the QR plate. So your camera won't accidentally fall out. All right. So that's there now. What we have to do is just take off this top handle. So there's one Allen screw on the 7800, which is very nice, very easy to take off compared to the uh, other one. Um, let's unplug the battery. It's probably a good idea. And let's just see how this comes in here. Like this. So there you go. Let me turn this handle around actually. All right, there you go. Close this up. So as you can see, the whole unit fits in here with that one uh, top handle removed, which is just one hex screw so that'll go in here and it sucks to have to carry around a hex screw uh, it's not such a big deal but if you wanted to you could probably replace this one screw with a thumb knob that way you don't have to carry any tools you could just tighten it up uh, with a thumb knob here a ratcheting one um, so i'll look into that myself see which one i can use to replace this hex screw that way the system's completely toolless and i don't have to worry about anything but anyways there's the gimbal. I do have some extra foam padding if I want to cut it out. This is the pluck foam um, to customize it a little bit better here. But does it fit? Yeah, there's actually this foam here is uh, fairly thick, so we can go a little bit deeper if we wanted to cut some of the foam out. Um, but this is it. The Nook 945, uh, nice little hard case, not as big as those uh, the Pelican 1610, I think it is. Uh, so it's a, it's a nice hard case for your came gimbals. If you guys have any other questions on this stuff, check it out at the blog, cheesycam.com.